welcome to yoga. I'm Morgan and I'm a registered dietitian and yoga teacher and today we're going to dive into cool down post cycling. Now I have another video which I'll put below um, that requires a, a you know block like a little bit of a prop. This one does not so if you don't have any props it's a great one to get started with. So we're assuming that you're already really nice and warmed up. Uh, you just came off the bike and maybe got showered up, changed, whatever that might be. And if not, that's okay too. So we're gonna start in child's pose. So either big toes, big toes don't always touch actually. And then you can either draw your knees really close or wide. Know that wide is gonna be more of a hip opener and together um, it's gonna be a little bit more of a back opener. So decide what feels either better in your body or what you need and then take your arms out and just melt completely head is heavy take a couple of breaths here And then inhale, start to walk your way up, take your knees over to one side, let's say over to the right, and then you're going to walk your hands over to the left, sideways child. Getting into those QLs, which help keep you upright when you're riding for those longer distances. Actually, any distance. <laughs> and then knees to the left, squeeze your legs together, sit your hips back as far as you can, walk your hands over to the left, Knees, or knees to the left, hands to the right. Goodness gracious, the words are not coming out today. We'll get there. We will get there. And then inhale. Draw yourself up. Make your way onto your belly. So on your belly, this is going to help uh, release your low back. It also helps to kind of open up your hip flexors, chest, all that good stuff. You can stay here. And sphinx, so forearms would be parallel and you just look straight ahead. If you're feeling enough sort of of a stretch in your low back, if you want more of a quad stretch, and if your quads are cooperating today, bring your arm perpendicular. Um, so if you had a mat, it would be parallel to the short edge of your mat. And then bend your left foot, push down through your elbows to lift your chest, squeeze your legs together. Activate your glutes, super important to protect your low back. Reach back for your left foot with your left hand, and maybe you just stay here, breathing into that quad. If you have a little more access in your quad, you're gonna bring the heel closer to you, start to turn your fingers down, your elbow and point up. And that's gonna be a deeper shoulder stretch as well. And then wherever you are, look forward, and try to square your sternum off to the front of your mat or just the front of your body. And then slowly release. Switching sides, your left arm comes across, lift your chest, reach back, find your foot. And then again, push your heel towards your glutes. Maybe your fingers point down and your elbow points up. Breathe into your shoulders, open your chest, push your knees down, push your hips down, big breath in. Big breath out. Slowly release without slingshotting, getting a little bit more of a shoulder opener. Take your left hand out, straight out of your shoulder. So if I'm laying on my belly, my hand comes straight on my shoulder and my palm is going to stay down. You can actually do this on the wall and you just roll open. It's a little bit more doable though on your belly. So just like in that belly position, right hand comes underneath your right shoulder. Walk your left hand out, palm faces down, bend your right knee, and then open up. Then you want your top leg to be really kind of floppy. Big breath in, smooth breath out. And inhale, return to center, taking it to the other side, roll open. So let's see, I'll go on this side. So right arm comes straight out of your shoulder, hand faces down, bending that left knee, walk your hand out, 
and roll open. Now this left hand, you can push down and forward for a little bit more of a stretch, or you can reach back or just hang out. Then inhale, come to center, press back to tabletop, and then into a down dog. So a down dog is actually similar to how you might be when you're leaning over on the bike, um, but a lot of times we don't use our core, so I want you to focus on lengthening your core and also your back as you're stretching out your calves and hamstrings. So press your hands down and forward, your index finger points forward, and then lift your hips up and back. Push your hands down more, and rather than round, if your back is really tight, bend your knees, tilt your pelvis up, and bring your low ribs and thighs closer together. So again, lengthening our back after, after being on the bike. From here, we're going to come into pigeon. Your left knee comes right behind your left wrist. If that does not work for you, you can come onto your back and make a figure four shape. Flex both of your feet, keep them active. You can stay here, or you can come down to your forearms and breathe into your left hip. Click your left hip back, right hip forward. So not only are we getting into our outer left hip, but we're opening up our quad just a bit as well. Expansive inhale, steady exhale. Place your hands down, tuck your toes, inhale three-legged dog, bend your left knee, open up your hip, and if you know how to flip your dog, you can do that, otherwise just stay in that nice hip stretch. Come back to three-legged dog, set up for down dog, and then pigeon, right knee behind your right wrist. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So the more you can wiggle out your back foot, the longer and kind of more length you can usually get in that quad. And then again, maybe lower down to forearms. Close your eyes and soften your jaw. Slowly work your way up and swing or come back to that down dog. Three legged, reach your right leg high, bend your knee, open up your hip. Flip your dog or stay. And then exhale, lower down. Find your way into a seat. And then bring the soles of your feet to touch. So that was getting into your inner or your outer hips a bit and again your quad. This is going to get into your inner thighs. And any position for cyclists where your knees are apart is usually pretty therapeutic and pretty good since um, when you're on the bike. Even if your legs are moving, your hips are always in that internal rotation and so there can be a lot of stickiness in this area, which is why then we want to externally rotate and open. So bring the soles of your feet to touch, sit up really tall. Maybe even support yourself lifting your hips a little higher and then exhale fold. And you want to keep a flat back, meaning lengthen, 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 rather than completely round. And inhale, come up. You can stay here. You can come onto your back for a little shavasana. You can take legs up the wall. Um, but if there's anything else that you kind of need to round out your practice, feel free to honor that as well. Sometimes it's just as simple as hugging your knees in towards your chest. I hope that, that you found this helpful and hopefully have a little bit more relief after your ride. Um, and again, I'll put the other video below, which is 
definitely gives you some other options and some other poses, um, stretches that'll, that'll kind of help with some of those cycling things. Till next time, keep it kind.